And I am so Yo, what's up? This is the Jay Dennis Podcast for Wednesday, June 3rd, 2020. And if you don't understand why I made an exception this week to do the podcast on a Wednesday instead of a Tuesday, then uh, I suggest you revisit the Death Clock clip that I just played. I'm, uh, yeah, a couple months ago maybe more than a couple, maybe like seven or eight months ago, I went back and rewatched the entire Metalocalypse series. Um, they got three great albums and a great show. What a great legacy that, that is. Um, yeah, today's my birthday. I'm 29 years old now, and I'm feeling up to it. I might also be doing a video today, not just a podcast, but a video um, kind of, I think I'm thinking of calling it what I accomplished in my twenties so far, because I have one more year left of my twenties. Cause you know, when you turn 30, everything just lines up and everything just makes sense. It's just your twenties where you're, you're tried and you're tested and you know, these first, you know, 10 to 12 years of adulthood are, you know, what really helps shape you. It's kind of funny how much of your personality and your being is shaped, you know, just in the first couple of years of your life, but then how much more it happens during your adolescence. And then I forget what it is, but I guess a lot of your beliefs and your just the way your your brain is in general, a lot of it is basically cemented by the time you're 26. I forgot what it was, something with your either prefrontal cortex or lobe, or I, I don't know, I'm not a brain guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm going to make a video that just kind of goes over some misconceptions based on my own personal experience about being in your 20s and about how I, I felt this immense pressure to be the successful musician like straight out of high school and or like in my early college years and just seeing how many bands failed and I'm sure this has been going on for years but I think with the advent of social media it probably exponentialized things um this desire like oh my god if I don't if I'm not a rock star by the time I'm in my 20s or before I'm 30 I'm fucked oh Fred Durst of Limp Biscuit put out his first album when he was 27 oh yeah I'm 27 this is, this is this is the year if I want to have a sem, you know semi similar experience to one of my idols. It's like nah, I got a different path, different life, different circumstances. It's okay. And just to kind of give a short teaser as to what I'm going to talk about, um, it's going to be all about breaking free of certain molds and accomplishing just a tremendous amount of stuff like. There are people my age and younger that have done significantly more than me, not just on paper, but also they've lived more life, whether both good or bad experiences, they've obtained different levels of wisdom that are within a stone's throw, very far stone's throw of where I'm at right now. I've lived a pretty safe, pretty uh, consequence-free life, um, which I'm very thankful for. Um, so in a lot of ways, I try to be an ally to those that are having it harder. And I don't like to make excuses for people that have general control of their life, but that general control is not complete. There are a lot of factors that are systemic, systematic, that are, you know, out of our control. And I'm not just talking about race, and I'm not just talking about what's going on right now. I'm talking about, like, with money with the economy, everything. Like, there are certain cards that are held against you. There are certain um, regulations and rules and laws and just 
bullshit biases that shouldn't exist. But all you can do is control what you can control. And I'm going to talk about that in my video about how in my 20s, I am on a track to financial freedom and independence that no, that a large majority of the population doesn't even achieve by the time they're like towards the typical retirement age. I'm going to talk about financial freedom. I'm going to talk about this BS philosophy that if you're young and, a Demo and you're not a Democrat, then you don't have a heart. But if you're old and you're not a Republican, you don't have a brain. Like, screw that. Screw that completely. I've had a handful of people who I respect but disagree with tell me, oh, when I was your age, I was a young liberal too. But as you get older and you start to do, do, do it's like, no. It, life isn't linear like that. Um, I personally believe that people have just become cynical over time and they've become more selfish. And I have my own sense of selfishness that I live with, but it's it's a little bit different. Uh, it typically doesn't hurt people. <laughs> so um, I don't feel as bad about that. And I tend to look at another kind of selfishness being more... Uh, evil or bad um, as much money that I've been making the past couple months I still get a little bit stressed out when I when I spend it but I've learned that people that are prosperous um, they don't just hoard their money they, they, they let it flow they spend it and yeah I'm currently working on getting out of debt right now so I am still being a little bit more frugal with my money and not frivolous but there are certain things that my house is needed that my wife and I have needed and that I've been putting off for a long time and I finally got those things and I can enjoy it. I can enjoy life. I can enjoy the fact that my kitchen finally has more space in it now because I got rid of that giant table and replaced it with something more space friendly. I did that yesterday. I had a productive day yesterday so that I could enjoy more of today being my birthday so that I could just relax, play Final Fantasy all day, drink some White Claws, maybe have another... <laughs> Maybe have another gummy or something. Um, we'll see how today goes, but um, throughout the last week, I've reintroduced the 12-week uh, year back in to my regimen. I took a month off from that, basically, and just got exhausted with all these different systems or habit trackers that I have. I have like an app on my phone called Habitica. I have a spreadsheet where I track my 12-week my year, and there's just a few other things where I'm just like, I need to cut back and simplify shit um, but I'm okay with having a habit tracker on my phone like Habitica where I put my to-do list on it too and yeah I do get a little bit of an endorphin rush when I check things off and I feel good and then for the 12-week year where I actually quantify more things and I have my four goals which I've reintroduced as the same you know if you want to know what those are you can go back and listen to some podcasts for, from earlier this year but you know Financially, um, second one is more around meditation and like self discipline and, and stuff like that. The third one is with you know instead of going to the gym, it's home workouts and running a mile. Um, and then my fourth one, of course, because I had such a productive time earlier this year with putting out or uh, putting on paper new Raptor Riot music. I want to get back to that because I've been feeling creative lately and kind of want to see what it's like to write music under a specific influence because like you just let go and you just feel your sense your senses heighten and it's you know not a need to feel medicated or feel comforted during these trying times like again I've had it pretty easy and I'm pretty damn grateful for the opportunities that I have like and I don't know if I apologize or say that too much but I also don't know if it could ever be said enough it's just I was raised to show gratitude and be grateful and say thank you and even if you're manifesting and creating all this stuff for yourself it's not bad to acknowledge other powers in play that help make that happen so and I just firmly admit and it's this is a big thing I've learned in my 20s um, because I had this issue early on when I was like 20 turning 21 but but throughout the course of the years, it's been mended and it's been, you know, heading in a more positive direction. But like you can't live on an island and you can't do things by yourself. 
But yeah, I'm going to go over my accomplishments, why they matter, why they're not just impressive on paper, but you know, starting a good marriage and being with somebody that that's meaningful by 25, having graduated at 25 and everything else that I've accomplished, of course, with a lot of help should be noted. And every story is different. Not, my video is not going to resonate with everybody. I know my podcast doesn't resonate with everybody. I, I'm i not for everybody, and everybody's not for me, which is the beauty of this life. Um, but yeah, that's ultimately what I want to do today. Like On my birthday, I don't like working. I had to respond to something earlier. That That's it. I, I, I set aside 20 minutes, and I took care of it. It was pretty important, so... But other than that, I don't intend on looking at my email or anything today. I'm not calling anybody. I will do more of that during the week. Um, even on my own birthday, I feel the need to say that I like to get some productive stuff and get a lot of things taken care of so that I can justify relaxing and taking it easy today. Um, in Final Fantasy VII Remake... I'm on chapter 13 right now. There's 18, so I've already put about, I think it was like 26 hours into the game. Again, still loving it, but I'm going to play a lot of that today. Um, it's quite a feeler. I, I, I'm i loving it. Um, enjoy the rest of the podcast. You're going to hear some references to uh, Black Label Society. I've gone through all their albums. I'm still, you know, getting into them and listening to stuff. Uh, oh, by the way, if you hear me reference um, a track off of Hangover Music, Volume 6. The song is crazy or high. Um, so if you hear me sing something like that later, <laughs> that's what the song is. I think it's the opening track. It's called Crazy or High. Um, again, that album is kind of an album of ballads, but Black Label Society does them well. So although it's not my favorite album, because I like the heavier shit, like Order of the Black or Mafia, um, or Blessed Hell Ride or Skullage, <laughs> or Sonic, Sonic Brew, um, still pretty great. Um, very happy to get into them, and I love Zach Wilde's voice, and I love watching <laughs> half of their music videos. I think they were designed to be watched under the influence. So this clip's going on a little long. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, yeah, peace. What's up? It's Sunday, May 31st, 7.45. I'm getting some takeout. Because my wife and I are in a financial position where we can just say, fuck it, let's get takeout. Pretty lucky right now. Um, I got some pad thai. She's got some sort of spicy vegetable soup. Pretty excited about this. Oh, and we just had some curbside groceries stuck within my trunk. So, again very lucky right now um you know this has been roughly going on for about two and a half months this whole pandemic this whole corona trend you know i'm pretty much sick of this trend being over oh and what's this we have a new trend happening it looks like a police brutality decided to rear its ugly head again and now all the ignorant people are coming out and talking about how property damage is way more important than human life and let's see, let's not even address the fact that some of this property damage might actually be done by people that aren't part of the protests. And by the way, if you're one of these people that likes to talk about Martin Luther King, the king of peaceful protesting that was still arrested several times and fucking assassinated, then uh, try to have a little bit more depth to your so-called arguments. Okay, You could sit there and think that I'm just attacking you and all your values, but at this point, I just don't think you have any values. Because obviously, peaceful protesting leads to an innocent black man like Colin Kaepernick getting ostracized from the league, from the NFL. 
peaceful protesting doesn't work. The guy takes a knee, and what happens? A fucking officer sticks his knee into an innocent, unarmed, allegedly non-violent crime-committing black man while three other officers stood there and did nothing. The cop that did that had 18 complaints against him. Oh yeah, yeah. We like to we like to check the backgrounds of the of the victim, but how about we check the background of the fucking perpetrator? Racist piece of shit that should have gotten charged with first degree murder. Cops are supposed to de-escalate the situation, not fucking escalate the situation. They're doing this with these protests across the country. They're shooting the press with rubber bullets and tear gas. They're shooting innocent bystanders with tear gas. I say this full fledged, with full confidence knowing that I know people in my life and I even have some clients that have this occupation so obviously I'm not talking about everybody but I will just say that I fully understand and fully agree as to why the song Fuck the Police was written back in the early 90s was it NWA, was it Ice Cube was Ice Cube part of NWA? I don't remember but it's a very strong statement that, that bears repeating Fuck the Police okay It does not mean go out there, be an asshole and break the law and mess with any cops that are just trying to do their, 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 their job. Okay. Because I'm this ultra patriotic liberal that always thanks a veteran when I meet him. If I know that the cop is a good person, I always thank them for what they do. Like I'm just that kind of guy. Okay. But the police are failing right now. The way that they're trained, the way that many of them conduct themselves. And I'm going to just throw the argument back in your face if you say, oh, well, a couple bad apples doesn't spoil the bunch. Well, how come cops are the only occupation that are allowed to have a couple of bad apples? You can't have this with surgeons. You can't have this with pilots. And uh, how about a couple of those bad apples that are in the protests? And there are these so-called riots. They're not even riots at this point. They're they're protests that have been escalated. I, riots are a lot worse. And this country was founded on riots, right? Doesn't revolution that's not peaceful typically lead to like actual change that's usually good? Didn't riots and like protests lead to like more equal rights? Didn't riots and protests lead to us being a sovereign nation? But the argument that I want to throw back in your face is if you're okay with a couple of bad apples being in the police force, then we should be okay with a couple of bad apples being in these protests, right? I don't know if I'm speaking to anybody directly here. But, again, if you're not part of an oppressed group, you don't get to tell the oppressed group how to respond to stuff. You don't. You simply don't. All you can do is be an ally, and try to be somewhat compassionate, okay? Because again, I can't empathize or relate to what other groups go through. All I can do is be an ally. All I can do is support how I can and be an ally. And generally speaking, I've done that. Not even generally. I'm pretty sure I've 100% done this with how I cast my votes and who I support. But all that intensity aside, how's everybody doing? (laughs) Um, as you heard from like that seventh grade performance sounding version of me playing guitar, I swear a lot of these clips where I'm playing guitar, they're, they're, they're bumpers. Okay. They're, they're little, little clips that are supposed to break up the podcast. Um, some of them are just me covering some shit that I'm listening to at the moment. Like, again, I'm really, I'm really into black label society right now. I've actually, I've listened to all 10 of their studio albums from start to finish now. Okay, so I've, I've, I've grown past what little exposure I had to Mafia and Shot to Hell back in the mid-2000s, and I've actually listened to all of them now. Although I'm still finishing Shot to Hell, because um, I'm listening to it on YouTube because it's not on Spotify. Um, but yeah, that was Concrete Jungle. Um, I actually really like that song. Excuse me a second. So yeah, before I get back into talking about Black Label Society, if you want to take my podcast out of context and just splice out the part where I said fuck the police and just assume that I'm some sort of blue life matter hating lefty or something, then 
that's obviously very incorrect. Again, there are people that I know that have that occupation and they wear their badge with honor. Okay. Again, I have a couple of friends and a couple of clients that do that, but those people condemn the actions of their fellow officers uh, across state lines or different counties or whatever. And they don't, they don't like it. So understand, because obviously we have to do this with many of our statements. Understand. I'm not saying that as a blanket statement. Okay. But I think, I think you guys, if you know me well enough at this point, you understand that that's, that's my position. My position is that the police have a very difficult job and they put their lives on the line every day. But I assert very strongly that many of them are trained poorly and they actually end up escalating situations more than de-escalating them. I've been pulled over a couple of times since I've started driving. Most of the officers that pulled me over were very nice. But I don't know how much different life would have been if I had a different skin pigment. And that cannot be denied. There's video evidence. There have been people that have been wrongfully murdered and brutalized. And there's been fucking videos of, of riots, of people not posing any threats. There was a woman with her hands up and a fucking officer came up and kicked her over. She had her face covered. She got kicked over. She had a seizure. Fuck that guy. And fuck the precinct that's not doing anything about it. There was a pregnant woman that got tear gassed and she was just a bystander and she had a miscarriage. Again, a lot of this stuff is horrific and there needs to be reform. There needs to be action taken. And it seems that the only way that this country gets anything done is that there's some sort of, whether it's semi-violent or fully violent revolution. Because God forbid we can't get past all the bullshit gridlock that's happening in Washington with all these dumbass career politicians needing to be voted out. All right. Anyway, back to Black Label Society. So I have this playlist, and it basically covers the 10 studio albums that they have. They have other albums, um, like some sort of compilation album called Skullage, which has one track, I think, from Shot to Hell, the song New Religion. I'm like, great. You're going to have any song off that album. It better be New Religion, because that's, that's one of Black Label Society's best songs. One of my favorite guitar solos of all time. One of my favorite piano intros of all time. It's just an all-around amazing song with a powerful chorus. I've loved that song since I was 15. Um, so that's one of the exceptions of non-studio album songs that are on my playlist. But I've I've gone through uh, Sonic Brew, uh, Stronger Than Death. I'm basically listing off the albums now because this is, this is that kind of podcast. Uh, what else is there? Blessed Hell Ride, Volume 4 or volume five or six. I don't, I don't fucking know what it's called, but it's called hangover music. It's a generally, it's a generally soft album, but I finally listened to that all the way through. Uh, there's mafia, there's shot to hell, uh, catacombs of the something grimmest hits order of the black. Pretty sure I got most of those. Um, Oh yeah. Sorry. 1919. Uh, yeah, I think that was all 10 of them. But yeah, I've gone through all those albums, and if I could just tell you off of just one listen, at least one listen from start to finish, if I could tell you any album that are among my favorites, it would probably be Mafia. So one of the first albums I ever heard back in the day when it was relevant, still one of my still still their best one. Uh, I love Order of the Black. It seems like with Black Label Society, I tend to favor their their heavier albums. But again. Black Label Society, Zach Wilde, they, they do the piano and the acoustics really well, too. Uh, Hangover Music is a fucking excellent album. There's a song on there called Lane, which must be a tribute to Alice in Chains. And then there's another song on there called uh, Something or Drunk. Uh, or Am I Just Something and Drunk? I don't I don't know. Uh, but I love that song. It sounds like Alice in Chains. There are tracks in the discography of Black Label Society that very much have that influence and I don't know how influenced Zach Wilde is by Ozzy Osbourne having been in his band but his vocals have really grown on me overall and I'm very happy that I've gotten into into this band but yeah so Mafia uh the fucking uh Blessed Hell Ride which is I guess their most popular album uh Sonic Brew and uh Order of the Black and uh what would be a strong fifth album I guess uh Maybe shot to hell. But anyway, let's 
clip's going on a little long, so enjoy the rest of the podcast. Yo, what's up? It's Tuesday, June 2nd. Um, I guess, yeah, I guess this is the end of the podcast because this isn't the actual intro clip. It's uh, Tuesday morning. I'm once again doing a post-Walmart run. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't really try it anything. That's my Pete Davidson impression that I stole from Kyle Dunnigan. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was I saying? Uh, it's all the weed that I'm smoking. I already forgot what I was going to say. Uh, shit. Yeah, another post Walmart uh, podcast. Got there at little little late. Got there at seven thirty, um, but it was drama free. I think as long as I get there before nine. <laughs> oh God, I caught it! As long as I get there before nine, I'm okay. But I still prefer to do it first thing in the morning. I got my essentials. Got my toilet paper. Because, like, the store next to my house still is sold out of it, but most other places are, like, kind of like getting back to normal. You know what I was able to buy? Even though they're still limited to quantities of one? You know what I got to buy? I bought some Clorox wipes. Yeah, I did it. I got them. Uh, uh, But no, just got the fucking stuff that I need to make dog food. Uh, Let me talk to you guys about... Uh, ground turkey it usually comes in two forms it comes in the tube shaped like plastic wrap where it's like you know shaped into like a tube same thing with like ground beef but ground turkey also and then there's the stuff that comes in the rectangle and it comes in you know pre-shaped into a rectangular shape and a rectangular plastic package I usually prefer the plastic packaging even though it's or the uh, the hard packaging even though it's uh, not exactly eco-friendly I mean, either is the soft packaging, um, but the turkey is easier to mush up and put in the put in the oven for when I bake it. But it costs a little bit more. The packaging costs more, so therefore it costs more. Well, the stuff that was available today was the uh, soft plastic, you know, the tube shaped kind. So, having bought eight of those, I probably saved overall. I probably saved ten to twelve dollars. Sometimes I'm willing to spring a little bit and spend an extra. $15, 12 to $15. Uh, it's, it's not just the packaging either. It's the it's the fat content of the meat that you're buying for your dogs. The cheapest kind is the 85, 15% fat one. Which, if you have two lean dogs that you're trying to, you know, put some girth on, some of the stuff... I'd say I, I, I strain about half of the fat... Because the the vet recommended, you know, keep keep at least I uh, keep keep at least some in there. Anyway, this is a fucking fabulous podcast, isn't it? Um, I don't think I recorded a clip yesterday to kick off the month of June, my favorite month. And today's June second. You know what that means? You know what tomorrow is, right? <laughs> um, nah, this morning it's my my stupid Walmart run. Which again, they're not as stressful as they were at first. Like when I when we were like in the heat of uh, winter and the uh, the virus was, you know, pretty fresh, uh, I would go in there completely covered from head to toe, almost like a homemade hazmat suit. But as soon as we learned that it basically cannot be contracted physically, it can only be contracted respiratorially, uh, vaginally, dentally, um, I decided, okay, well, I don't have a vagina, so I don't have to worry about... I don't have a vagina, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, so yeah, I just fucking went in a tank top and shorts today. 
But I still wore my PPE because that's what a decent person does. I'm sick of all these middle-aged people walking around like they're all tough. That or I'm just at a chip on my shoulder. And maybe they're not doing that. But I don't know. I'm just going off of some anecdotes where you, you just see a couple of, you know, older guys that are just like, yeah, fucking blown out of proportion. I was watching Tucker Carlson while I was circle jerking my... My, my, my friend Bob, he's my only friend because people generally don't want to talk to me because I'm an unpleasant person that has an ignorant viewpoint of the world. Um, <laughs> all that because they, didn't, they wouldn't wear a mask in the store when, oddly enough, they're the ones that are more at risk. But me, fucking caring millennial, it, it really blows my mind. Again, most millennials, including myself, are well into adulthood at this point. We're not these college-age high schoolers anymore. The youngest millennials are like 20. Or 25. Many of them are getting out of college at this point. The oldest ones are in their mid to late 30s at this, at, at this point in the game. Um, uh, so yeah, a lot of us are adults and we can take responsibility for our own shit for the most part, but it's still so funny when older generations, especially when the older generations make up the majority of like, I don't know, the fucking government try to be like, your generation da, 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 da. it's like, oh, uh, I'm sorry, how how are we able to do that when we're not the largest voting block? How are we able to do that when we're not the ones that are in power? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. You were trained by your propaganda networks to divert attention away from the problem and blame somebody else. Never, never take responsibility for your actions. Oh, and great, what happens when we do that for so long? We create a situation where we have a fucktard like Donald Trump become president. A guy that never takes responsibility for any of his actions. Never. Never. I, th- I thought that's what being a Republican was all about. I thought that's what being a Republican was all about. I just said that twice. Was personal responsibility. Personal accountability. Bullshit. It's not. It's passing the blame. Hey, so yeah. Um, the, the, the This morning, somebody is purchasing this horrific, it's not horrific, it's actually a nice table, it just doesn't go well in our kitchen, in our uh, kitchen space, so I bought something more, uh, more feng shui, more, uh, ergonomic to the room in terms of space, um, I bought a rectangular table, what is this, more books, I bought a rectangular table, that's a little bit taller but it's not a big circular table, so overall it doesn't take up as much surface area. So I went on Facebook, Facebook, and uh, I sold the damn thing pretty quick. I got it for more than I anticipated, because it's a nice table. And I said, hey, you have to prepay. I'm not doing any of this chasing you down bullshit. If you want, I need to know that you're serious. I need to pre-qualify you. If you're serious, please prepay and understand that I will be practicing social distancing. The table will be out on my driveway. That's the only hard part. I have, that's the only hard thing I have to do this morning, really, is figure out how to get this table out my front door and fucking <laughs> put it on my driveway. Because there's stairs. It's a big table. It's heavy. I don't have a second person. I even told the person, I was like, hey, make sure you bring help and you bring a truck because you have to prepay. You have to pick it up. And I can't help you because social distancing. And yeah, they got a fucking deal. I paid two hundred and forty dollars for a new table, and I got to recoup at least a fourth of my of, of my cost by selling the old one. Which, by the way, the old one is a nicer table. It's nicer, but it's old. And again, it doesn't fit the kitchen, so I just I sold it. Okay, that's what happens when you have used stuff. You sell it. For when it's not brand uh, for a not brand new price, that's how economics work. That is supply and demand. And when we age, we cost more unless we hit that breaking point, and uh, we become an antique. Oh, I should have called it an antique, antiqua. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I'm about to. Go, I, I, that's why I'm. Uh, that's why I'm still doing this podcast, um, because I don't want to go inside and move this table outside. Um, but I assembled the new one. Uh, it required a rubber mallet to bang some pieces together, but I don't. I didn't have one of those, so I just took a regular hammer and a really thick towel, folded up several times, and I, whatever surface areas needed to be hit with the hammer, I placed the towel there, and because uh, there were some stools that needed to have the seat portion banged on, uh, 
and everything, so I did that. There was no damage. Everything's good. It, uh, it said it was a two-person job to assemble this table in, you know, about an hour and a half. I did it in, like, an hour by myself. All by myself. My hands are fucking sore, though, because I was using my palms at one point to try to, like, palm thrust the, uh, pieces together, but whatever. So, yeah, my kitchen has more space in it now. Thank God. And... Yeah, if there was no table at all, it would just look kind of weird in there. So now we have a table that's more appropriate. Now we just need to get rid of the annoying low hanging low hanging uh, lamp and do something that's more of like a ceiling light, giving you guys a taste of my vision. So yeah, I'm gonna go take this table outside. Um, I have therapy at 11. Little detail, little important detail there. Taking care of myself. Um, it's a phone call. Um, yeah, and then the rest of the day I can do whatever the fuck I want. Uh, I should be somewhat productive because tomorrow I'm going to be lazy as shit. I'm going to completely clean my house today, do some work, so that way I have full-fledged um, ability and peace of mind to actually enjoy my damn birthday tomorrow.